My eldest son was imprisoned, and my stepmother said he deserved it. My second daughter dot in dot law suffered a miscarriage after being beaten, and she was punished to stand on a winter night. My stepmother said her daughter dot in dot law's body was useless. The youngest son was sent to a wealthy family as a horse's foot pedal, while the eldest daughter was sent to be a maid that night. The stepmother said that the family couldn't afford it, so it's better to go and exchange some money. The youngest daughter is busy finding a husband's family for her. The husband's family is a wealthy neighbor, but the son is a fool. The stepmother said to let the youngest daughter enjoy her life. As she watched her stepmother focus her gaze on her grandson and granddaughter, she unexpectedly returned from a trip to the mountain and woke up with a drastic change in temperament. From then on, in the years of severe drought, the old Xiao family, who ate wild vegetables, surprisingly also ate white noodles and meat vegetables. The thatched cottage has also been replaced with a large green brick house. Every day at home, we strive for success, and every day in business, we strive for wealth. Each of their children and grandchildren was taken home by their stepmother, and the entire family went to school, passed the imperial examination, and entered the top three. Their days of prosperity were flourishing. But the stepmother is going to be taken away by her biological parents, who say they want to find a stepfather for their stepmother keywords of the novel. Dressed as a malicious stepmother, the whole family is wealthy and prosperous without pop-ups, dressed as a malicious stepmother, the whole family is wealthy and prosperous. Download the complete set of TXT, dressed as a malicious stepmother, the whole family is wealthy and prosperous. Latest Chapters for Reading Chapter 1, The Bad Farmer Woman You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 1, The Bad Farmer Woman About 10 Zhang away from the head of Yaoshan village, there are two thatched cottages and a thatched hut, inhabited by the people of the old Xiao family. Mrs. Zhou, the eldest daughter dot in dot law of the old Xiao family, carried a bowl of thick black vegetable paste from the thatched hut to the thatched cottage. The thatched cottage didn't even have a door, and upon entering it was a rotten bed. Standing at the entrance of the courtyard, there was no obstruction, and the whole room was visible at a glance. On the vine rack in the room, there lay a plump woman lying flat on the bed with her eyes closed. Zhou carefully carried the bowl to the edge of the rotten bed and whispered, Mom, it's noon. Get up and have some food. The chubby woman on the bed opened her eyes and tilted her head to look at the bowl brought by Zhou. The vegetable leaves in the bowl were cooked black and rotten. Can this thing be eaten? I'm not hungry yet, you take it away. The chubby woman refused all over her body. She said she wasn't hungry, but in reality, her stomach has been screaming countless times. Zhou was so scared that she quickly handed the bowl to the chubby woman and whispered, Mother, this is the bitter rice vine that Er Jing just found on the mountain in the morning. Is it still fresh? You. The chubby woman didn't want to say much, flipped over and turned her back to Zhou, saying, Take it away. The act of flipping over made the pergola creak, and the chubby woman was worried about collapsing her only bed. She couldn't sleep at night, so she sat up carefully and scanned the dilapidated home with only a thatched cottage in her eyes. Her name is Xiao Qing, the channel director of a chain supermarket and also the vice president of the group. In her thirties, she is still single because she was driving through the boundaries of Yao Shan while inspecting the operation of various supermarkets. At that time, it was raining heavily, and she was busy talking in the car. The car was hit by a huge rock rolling down the mountain, unfortunately losing her life. She passed through to Yaoshan village in Chaoyao Mountain County, Daqing. She woke up yesterday and saw the thatched cottage and the group of children and women beside her. She suspected that it was a prank by the regional manager of that group of monkey spirits. The reason was that she didn't want to see the operation of the chain supermarket and deliberately sent her to Yaoshan village to rest. But the fact is, she was wearing it alone, wearing it on Xiaoqing, a peasant woman who died while sitting on a stone at the village entrance when she went to the mountain due to excessive obesity. The original owner was picked up by Xiao Yuman. At that time, she was only twelve years old and squatting at the foot of the mountain, 
covered in scratches and falls. She pitifully watched Xiao Yumin pass by. Xiao Yumin is a veteran who is nearly half a century old. When he returned home from his old age, he met her on the way and kindly took her back to take care of him at home. The original owner didn't remember anything before the age of twelve, because there was a peace blessing hanging around her neck at that time, with her birth date and name on it, and nothing else was known. When Xiao Yumin brought the original owner to Yaoshan village, she was not familiar with her family. Although she was young, she was also well behaved. Although she was very fat, she looked ridiculous and cute, and even talked to people, which was quite likable. At that time, she was fourteen years old, and Xiao Yumin was seriously ill. The villagers suggested marrying a wife to celebrate, but after searching around, no one was willing. Xiao Yumin's siblings instigated her to marry Xiao Yumin. Since marrying Xiao Yumin, her original owner has changed, as if she should be like this in her memory. He treated his son and daughter dot in dot law extremely harshly, either hitting or scolding. He was very angry and felt that the fight was not satisfying, so he didn't give them food. Xiao Yumin died just a few days after getting married. After Xiao Yumin's death, the original owner became more and more arrogant, revealing her true colors. She was lazy and didn't do any work. After finishing her meal, the bowl was placed at her feet, and she didn't take it to the kitchen. She was already overweight, but was being served by her two daughter in law and became increasingly overweight. The next year, her second daughter in law Qin was pregnant for two months. She was beaten to the point of miscarriage by the original owner because she didn't give her water in the bath. As a result, she even scolded Qin for her poor health, incompetence, and inability to save her child. In the winter, when she gave birth, she let Qin stand outside. Two grandchildren and three granddaughters in the family are all afraid of her. The original owner did not allow them to eat at the same table as her, and they all ate what she left behind. The original owner was very good at eating. When the old Xiao family was still in the village, she ate nothing from a table of vegetables. However, in recent years, there has been a severe drought, and only two and a half bowls of mixed vegetables are left to eat, which is still reserved for five children and four adults. The children in the family were born to Xiao Yumin's ex-wife, who was able to give birth to three sons and two daughters. The eldest son, like Xiao Yumin, was a border city soldier. When they were in the barracks, the family was still rich. But two years after Xiao Yumin returned to his hometown, he was captured by the government, saying that their father and son were deserters. When Xiao Yumin died, the government raided the family of the old Xiao family, took their old house, and sent their whole family to live in the village. So far, Xiao Daijing, the eldest son, is still in prison and has not been released. The most hateful and damn thing about the original owner is his ruthlessness towards the children of Xiao Yumin. Xiao Yumin has five children, Xiao Daying is in prison, and Xiao Yujing is working at home. Two of the children were sent by the original owner to become servants of wealthy households in the county, claiming that they were lacking in command. The boy provided a footstool for people to ride on and off horses, and the daughter provided a maid for the night room. The two children were together. The owner pitifully gave them one or two silver, and only then did they receive the money. The original owner took them to a restaurant in the county to have a meal and spent it all. After learning about it, Xiao Yujing went back to his younger siblings, but was scolded by the original owner for not daring to enter. He even starved for a few days and relied on his neighbors to give him some food to save his life. And the youngest daughter is only eleven years old. The original owner was helping her find her husband's family, and has already found the fourth youngest son of the wealthy Fang family in Fangqiao village. These days, they are discussing with the matchmaker how much dowry they want and which day to choose. Yesterday, the original owner went to the mountain to see if he could find some fake stones to make boxes for his little daughter, so that he could deceive the village and the Fong family into giving her dowry. Unexpectedly, after committing many evil deeds, the original owner died like that. Sigh.
Xiao Qing stood up from the vine frame. The original owner was really not human, he was terrible. She dresses like a mother. In law, which is evil, biased, and favored by the group. At least she is a person who can change her ways and return to normal. What about her? She is lazy and bad, driven by greed, begging and flattering Xiao Yuman's siblings. She is such a bad chubby woman, only 18 years old, and has done all the bad things. Xiao Qing looked at the cramped thatched cottage. Apart from the rotten bed, the ground was covered entirely with hay, and less than ten square meters were divided into two thatched huts. The whole family was crowded together, with only her own rotten bed to sleep on. What a sin! Whose mother dot in dot law lives like this? Zhou was kneeling on the ground, holding a bowl and not daring to move, while Qin, who was from the second family, stood at the door with a few children and didn't dare to come out, waiting for her to make a sound. What kind of fear did she become? Xiao Qin couldn't breathe anymore. Although she wasn't the original owner, she couldn't suddenly change too much and didn't want to have a bad attitude towards the honest family. She spoke in a correct tone and said, You go give this bowl of food to Xiao Cheng's siblings. I'm not hungry today, I don't want to eat it. Upon hearing this, Zhou's face changed drastically. How many younger siblings did his mother want to give the only food in the family to? Did she hear it right? Despite years of severe drought, their family has long had nothing to eat, and even the rice vat has been exchanged for food. In the past two years, she has been living on the wild vegetables in the mountains and forests. This bowl is the only food in the family today, and she should be able to finish it on her own. End of this chapter Chapter 2, System Mall Supermarket You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2, System Mall Supermarket Xiao Qing looked at Zhou Shi kneeling and saw her eyes dodging and avoiding, afraid to look directly at her, indicating that she was very afraid of her. She raised the bowl above her head, indicating that she respected her as an ancestor. How could the original owner go down and hit her with such an honest woman? Zhou dared not disobey her mother's wishes. She had to listen to her mother's words so that she wouldn't be scolded or beaten. She stood up, carefully carrying a bowl, and walked outside, worried about turning back, afraid that her mother would regret it. She called her back. After Zhou brought out the bowl, she gave it to Qin, the wife of Chiao Yijing. Qin's face was full of doubts in her heart. What's wrong with her mother today? Although she doesn't have a smiling face towards them, why is she willing to give her only bowl of vegetable paste soup to her grandchildren to eat? In the past two years, children have been licking the water in the pot to taste it. Where have they ever tasted such thick vegetable soup? Mom woke up yesterday and fell asleep. She only drank a sip of water in the morning and then fell asleep again. Today, there is only this bowl of vegetable soup at home. Mom doesn't want to eat this, so what do you want to eat? Zhou didn't think much, just do as her mother orders her. She carried a bowl to the grass hut and divided the vegetable paste and soup into five small parts for a few children to eat. The children couldn't help but smell the mushy aroma of the food, and their grandson Xiao Cheng swallowed several mouthfuls of water in hunger. He didn't care about anything, even if he was beaten, he had to eat it first, holding a bowl and eating it big. Xiao Qing in the room watched the children eating the bowl of vegetable paste soup like hungry wolves, and couldn't bear it anymore. There was no salt taste in the vegetable paste. After boiling the water, he put the washed vegetables in and boiled them into a bowl of paste. It was bitter and astringent, and there was no way to eat it. But these children are eating more and more delicious one by one. How long has it been since I last ate it? Looking at their clothes again, the two boys were naked, the two daughter dot in dot laws clothes were patched and torn everywhere, and a few little girls were wearing wide and chubby clothes, probably brown linen clothes changed by their eldest sons. It was already early autumn, and if it were autumn and winter, they would freeze to death sooner or later. Xiao Qing lowered her head again and saw her clothes on her body, not to mention intact, at least with a shirt and pants on, 
with a few patches, looking very neat. The best clothes in the whole family were on her. She let out a long sigh, she was their grandmother, although not biological, how could she be such a child trainer? She was looking at them, and a few children felt her gaze, turning their backs while eating vegetables, afraid that she would not let them eat. Xiao Qing thought, why don't you hang out in front of them? They're afraid of her, how can we have a good meal? So she twisted her chubby body and supported the thatched cottage towards the back of the house. Qin and Zhou timidly watched as their mother went to the house, thinking she was going to help and not daring to ask more questions, just watching a few children lick their bowls. Zhou's eldest son, named Xiao Cheng, is over nine years old this year. He licked his toothless bowl cleaner than he washed, and touched his stomach with a satisfied silly smile, asking, Mom, Grandma is really good today. She gave us such a delicious vegetable paste to eat. This is the best wild vegetable paste I have ever tasted. Mom, in the future, milk and milk will be the same as today. We can still eat such a thick wild vegetable paste. Xiao Yuan Yuan is Qin's eldest daughter, who is over eight years old. She licked the bowl clean and sent it to the pot along with Xiao Cheng's bowl. She returned to Qin and asked with a smile, Mom, I also want to be able to eat such fragrant vegetable paste in the future. It's so fragrant. I often hear the three lines in the village say that white flower buns are the best to eat, and there are ones sold in the county. Mom, is there any vegetable paste soup delicious for white flower buns? Qin thought for a moment. When she was a child, she accompanied her father to the county town and saw white steamed buns. When she lifted the lid of the pot, white air came out, and the fragrance also drifted in. That fragrance is still remembered to this day. There shouldn't be any delicious steamed buns like white noodles, and my mother hasn't tasted them either. She only smelled the taste before. She had seen people eat them before, and they were plump and plump, bouncy and soft. After taking a bite, there was still meat juice flowing out, very fragrant and fragrant. Qin recalled. The children listened and swallowed several mouthfuls of saliva. They shouted loudly, Wow! I really want to eat it. No wonder Sanqing said, the best food in the world is white flour buns. Shu. Zhou asked them to whisper, I'll buy you some food when your dad comes out in the future. Don't let grandma hear about this, otherwise they'll say you only know how to eat. A few children covered their mouths together, their eyes shining with sparkling light, all of which were fantastical white-faced buns. Xiao Qing avoided them and circled around the thatched cottage, taking only a dozen steps to finish. The Chiao family really didn't have anything, two thatched huts and a thatched hut, that's all. There wasn't even a stool or table to sit on inside. In the memory of the original owner, the severe drought had been going on for several years, and the crops produced in the fields were decreasing. The village used to be a wealthy village, and those who had almost enough surplus food could last for two years. However, for the old Chiao family, the land was scarce and there was no harvest, so they had to rely on digging wild vegetables in the mountains and forests to eat. Now that the living animals and wild vegetables in the mountains have been dug up almost, it is really not easy to find someone to eat. She had been hungry for over a day and was so fat. After walking a dozen or so steps, she gasped for breath. She pinched her waist and looked up at the distant mountain, which was adorned with golden and green belts. In autumn, she kicked the stones on the ground in disappointment. Just as he suddenly kicked the stone hard, Xiao Qing unconsciously took a few steps back and wanted to vent a few words. Suddenly, a transparent white panel appeared in front of him. Ding! Congratulations, Master! The system mall has been successfully launched. Xiao Qing was startled. Listening to the transparent panel making a sound, she waved at him, but her hand couldn't scatter him. Master, I am Xiao Chao from the system mall. System mall. Xiao Qing withdrew her chubby little hand and propped her chin, pondering. What action did she just take to launch the system store? Is this the benefit of her travels? She just kicked a stone and activated him. 
Is it kicking stones? Hey, let's not worry about it for now. I'm so hungry and quickly reached out my hand from my throat. Since it's a mall, will there be any food inside? She looked at the prompt on the panel to enter the system, swiping it like she was swiping a tablet. The next page really showed various product categories and food categories. Xiao Qin couldn't wait to categorize it as cooked dishes. After ordering, various braised dishes, braised pork, and stir-fried pork trotters were all private dishes from top restaurants. She was dazzled by the sight and couldn't think of anything else. She quickly ordered a few braised pork, stir-fried pork, and pork trotters. Ding! Master, your points are not enough to place an order. Integral. Isn't the system all free? It's her travel benefit. Why do we need to integrate this? Xiao Qin clenched his fist and wanted to pound him, but he saw so much meat, braised, steamed, stir-fried, cold mixed eliminate the impulse of hammer and patiently read the usage instructions of the mall carefully. So, after half a cup of tea, Xiao Qin basically figured out the system. It turned out that the system relied on step count to exchange points, and then used points to exchange for products in the mall. She didn't know which generation of the system owner it was, and the conditions for binding the system were fat, very fat, followed by the traveler. End of this chapter Chapter 3, Mother Missing You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3, Mother Missing Xiao Qin saw the conditions for binding the system and helplessly supported her why are binding conditions so insulting. It's just a pedometer, exchanging steps for corresponding points, and it also comes with body condition. It's almost impossible for her to grow so fat during the drought. The system is really good at picking. The system records the number of steps taken every day, and the more you walk, the more items you can redeem inside. And when the system unfolds, only she sees it. Just now she took 20 steps, which is considered 20 points, which is the number of steps to start the system. If you want to buy all the vegetables and meat that you just ordered, you need more than 4,000 points. Xiao Qing decisively gave up on food and meat. With her body and bones, taking 4,000 steps is killing her. Xiao Qing crossed the next page to see if there were any cheaper hot food. She searched the system and found that there were really cheap pasta, steamed buns, mantu, and xiaolongbao. Even in the past few pages, the mall could exchange everything except silver. After comparing several pasta dishes, she chose xiaolongbao, because one steamed bun needs 100 points, one roasted wheat also needs 100 points, and mantu with 50 points is cheap, but difficult to swallow. Xiaolong Bao has only 200 points for one basket. She can walk a few more steps and still have enough to eat. She understood that this system was indirectly encouraging her to walk more and lose weight, but Comrade Xiao Chao, do you know that the original owner was overweight, not overweight, and after taking a few steps, she gasped for breath. Are you asking her to exchange her steps for goods, intentionally making her unable to exchange them? Gollum. At this moment, my stomach started screaming again. Xiao Qin takes a deep breath, but for Xiaolong Bao, she goes. Walk step by step towards the forest. After only a few steps, she gasped for breath. Her body was really weak. As soon as she took a few dozen steps, she gasped for breath. Moreover, the soft sand had been trampled out by her, making her feel both weak and fat. When she reached the forest, she was really unable to walk any further. Two hundred steps were very laborious for her, and the original owner rarely came down to walk. After walking on an empty stomach for more than a hundred steps, her legs and feet became weak. When deciding whether to proceed or not, the system prompts. Order successfully placed, product delivered. Xiao Qing's hand immediately appeared a bag of paper Xiaolong Bao. She was shocked when she saw the paper bag, but there was still a package. No matter what he has, she'll eat until she's full. At this moment, she is both hungry and tired, and urgently needs hot and fragrant buns to fill her stomach. 
seven Xilong bale were eaten by her in less than half a quarter of an hour. She leaned against the tree and enjoyed the feeling of satiety. It was so satisfying that she had strength in her hands and body. When I came into this forest just now, I was worried about eating and didn't carefully look at the forest. Now, looking up at the forest, many trees look like primitive locust trees, each with a different posture. It is early autumn now, and the green leaves are still vibrant and organic, with coiled roots rooted underground. There are several big trees crawling with cicada shells, and some trunks are cracked and lotus roots are hanging down. There is no food here. There are no green plants on the ground, and there is not even a bird on the tree. She is full, but the few skinny women and children at home who are as thin as firewood have not eaten yet. Just as he was thinking about finding something to eat, Xiao Qing's mind suddenly flashed. Since there is everything in the mall, will birds and wild birds and animals also exist? She eagerly summoned Xiao Chao and indeed found them among poultry and livestock. However, in the system mall, birds were prohibited from consumption by the country and were not sold. Fortunately, she found pigeons. Xiao Qin looked at the price and her eyes darkened. A live pigeon needed 1,500 steps. She searched again to see if there were any other birds or animals. In the corner of the system panel, there were even dead pigeons, which only needed 1,200 steps because they had just died, which was almost less than the original price. Xiao Qin couldn't help but get excited. It would be great if she could walk a few steps less. Moreover, looking at the dead pigeon, it was quite fat and enough for the family to eat at noon. She took a long breath and prepared for a new journey. She began to move her steps, and as long as she persisted in these thousand steps, her daughter dot in dot law and grandchildren would have pigeons to eat. So, Xiao Qin walked inside the forest, further and further away. When he got tired, he rested on the big tree and continued walking. Qin and Zhou, as well as their sister dot in dot law, watched as noon approached and there was not a single bite to eat at home. A few of them could only drink some cold water to relieve their hunger. Zhou washed the only valuable pot in the house, put away a few bowls, shook the water on her hand, and walked out of the thatched hut. Xiaolan, why hasn't mom come back yet? Xiaolan is the nickname of the Qin family. She was thinking that her man Xiao Irjing would still be searching for wild vegetables on the mountain when he came back. She didn't know if she could dig more wild vegetables, so that they would have a stutter at night and not go hungry all day. While stroking the hair of the garden and huazi like straw, she suddenly heard her sister dot in dot law ask and felt worried. Isn't that right? Mom has been away for half an hour, why hasn't she come back yet? Zhou strode to the back of the house and glanced anxiously, asking, Mother, shouldn't there be anything else happening? Qin heard that his mother was going to have an accident, so he quickly pushed away the two little girls and walked to the back of the thatched cottage to find someone. He looked at the empty house and said, Sister-in-law, isn't my mother coming to the back of the house? Why isn't there anyone behind here? She took a few more steps towards the back of the grass house and said, my mother went to the mountain alone, but when she came back, she fainted sitting on the stone pillar at the village entrance. I didn't eat today, so should I have collapsed somewhere? Two people looking at each other, it's really possible. Zhou became a bit anxious and said, let's go and find it quickly. If it's too late to find, in case something happens to my mother, they are the most unfilial and heinous sinners. Qin Shi is also nervous. The sun is quite poisonous at noon. Where have you been, mother? Okay, take a walk, go find it. Qin and Zhou hurriedly walked towards the back of the house. The old Xiao family had only lived here for a few years, and apart from the house, they saw a forest behind the house. They searched around the house and didn't see anyone, so they thought of searching for it. Nyang and more than a hundred people in Yaoshan village have had arguments before. The villagers don't like Nyang, saying that she killed her father. They also say that after Nyang came to old Xiao's house, she caused him to have no house or land, and he carried a malevolent aura. 
whoever gets close to her will die quickly. There are not many people in the village who want to be with her, so Nyan will definitely not go to the village. The two were anxious and ran to the forest to find someone. As she approached the forest, Zhou watched from a distance as a chubby figure walked back. She excitedly patted her thighs, wondering who else could be such a chubby body. In the entire Yaoshan County, Nyang is the fattest among all. She shouted loudly, Nyang, Nyang, where have you been? Why don't you help me? I won't see anyone anymore. Qin Shi felt relieved when she saw her mother and hurriedly ran over to continue, Mother, what are you doing in the forest? You're sweating profusely, come with us home. Xiao Qin rolled up her sleeves halfway, holding a large dead object in her hand. When she saw the two of them running over, her eyes suddenly lit up and she breathed a sigh of relief. She was too tired to talk to them, and it was difficult to catch her breath. End of this chapter Chapter 4, A Wild Dove You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4, A Wild Dove Xiao Qin couldn't lift the big fat pigeon in her hand for a long time. She threw the fat pigeon at the feet of the two and fell directly to the ground. You take it home and cook it to eat. I'm too tired to walk anymore. I'll take a break before I leave. You guys go back first. Xiao Qinglei lay on the ground, leaning against the tree roots, panting heavily. This original owner hasn't walked such a long road for many years, more than a thousand steps. It feels like she's taking half of her life. I want her to become the vice president of the group, walking more than 10,000 steps every day. This chubby body just walks a thousand steps, nothing more. Qin and Zhou looked at the wild fat pigeons on the ground in surprise, and listened to their mother's tone of voice. They were so surprised that their facial features were deformed that their mother was not fierce anymore. Are you tired and powerless to attack them? The two of them thought about it and could only be for this reason. Zhou looked at the fat pigeon on the ground, with two holes on its blood-stained neck, as if it had been bitten to death by something. There was also blood flowing out, as if it had just died. She picked it up and weighed it, weighing two or three pounds. She asked in surprise, Mother, where did you find this wild pigeon? In this dry weather, why does this thing grow so fat? It's almost catching up with a hen. Xiao Qing closed her eyes and rested. She also wanted to know why the pigeon was so fat. Isn't the pigeon very small, like a bird? It's also very small in the pictures on the system mall. When it fell down, it looked like a chicken. She even checked the system repeatedly and confirmed that it was this one. Where is it? Xiao Qing pointed to the forest behind him, shaking his plump hand. You two don't care where he found it for now. Help me go back quickly. I can't walk anymore, I'm too tired. Qin leaned her head to look at a forest where his mother was pointing. How could there be such fat wild pigeons there? In this forest, children come over to play whenever they have something to do. They have never seen wild chickens or ducks, perhaps they have never paid attention to the flying creatures in the sky. Zhou didn't think much. She picked up the wild pigeon and helped her mother up, supporting her fat and heavy body with a lean and dry body. After Xiao Qing stood up, he thought to the children at home and said, By the way, Xiao Cheng Yang, cook and eat this pigeon when you go home. We haven't seen any meat at home in these years, so this pigeon will be our lunch. Qing saw that her sister Dot in Dot Law couldn't hold on to her mother alone, so she stepped forward to help. Zhou tried her best to support her body with her own strength and said, Mom, please walk slowly, we'll hold you up. Qin was holding on to half of his mother's body. She was really too heavy, thanks to her sister Dot in Dot Law's strength. Otherwise, with her small and thin physique, she would have been crushed by her mother long ago. The two of them struggled to carry their mother's body towards home. Qin was worried in her heart that her mother said she would cook a pigeon for lunch. Such a fat pigeon, let her eat it on her own every time. It's a pity. It sounds good to say it's for the children to taste, but in fact, not all of it has entered her stomach. 
Instead of eating the whole one, it's better to have a few separate meals so that the children and the three of them can still see some meat, isn't it better? Mother, does this pigeon really need to be eaten at noon? Qin tried to ask again. Xiao Qin let out a sigh. Qin was thinking about how harsh her mother was towards them, and the child in her belly was in her hands. She didn't dare to argue against her, but fortunately she still had her sister. In. Lol. Zhou held a fat pigeon and supported one of his mother's arms, tired and unable to walk, but still persevering. But she hadn't seen any meat in a long time. When she saw the fat pigeon, she couldn't help but look back and forth on it a few times. The pigeon was so big and heavy, and the cooked meat was definitely not lacking. If she could take a bite or drink some meat soup, ah, it would be delicious. Zhou thought about it and swallowed saliva several times. But thinking that this pigeon was going to finish it all at once, I couldn't bear to part with it. Their family had eaten this meal without stopping, so they wanted to save some food. As long as they saved some food, it could last for two or three days. Zhou asked in a low voice, Mother, why don't I kill this pigeon and divide it into several large pieces for mother to eat? When will mother be hungry, and I'll cook it for mother to eat? Xiao Qing followed the two of them for a few steps, and saw that Zhou was exhausted. She was dragging her shoulder and had a pigeon weighing only a few pounds in her hand. In the original owner's memory, Zhou was too honest and rectal, which was more annoying than Qing, so she was the one who hit the most. She was pressed with such a large weight on her body, her face deformed from exhaustion, and she didn't say a word. She was afraid that if it continued like this, she would be exhausted and lying on the ground when she got home. She slowly pushed the two of them away. All right, I'm resting now, Xiao Qing said. Xiao Qingyang, I ate it all at noon. With so many people at home, this one is not enough to eat. Zhou immediately stopped, and Qin also stopped. Xiao Qingzheng was walking when she realized that the two of them had suddenly stopped. She turned back to look at them and realized that she had just pitted Zhou. Her voice had changed involuntarily, causing both of them to doubt. She inwardly exclaimed that it was not good, and a sudden change would make anyone suspicious. Alas, this won't work in the future. It's better to quickly explain the change in her temperament and make her family believe it. In an instant, a fierce light appeared in her eyes, and her face turned pale. She raised her voice and shouted, What are you two doing in a daze? I said you'll finish cooking and eating at noon. You two have so much nonsense. Upon hearing the familiar curses, Zhou and Qin suddenly regained their senses, as if they had just had an illusion. They weakly responded and then took small steps to follow their mother. Xiao Qin felt a panic in her heart, forgetting that her body was too tired. She walked quickly towards home, feeling like her life was being overdrawn with each step. When she arrived home, thanks to the support from Qin Shi, she sat back in the room and lay down with her eyes closed. Returning home, Qin served Xiao Qin to wash her face and pass water, while Zhou carried the fat pigeon to the grass shed to boil hot water and clean it. At noon, a few children came back with the dry branches they had picked up. Xiao Qing saw that his mother seemed to be shedding chicken feathers and ran to her side in surprise, crouching to look at the chicken. Mom, where did we get the chicken? Zhou turned her head to look at Xiao on the vine rack and saw Qin fanning her in the wind. She whispered, Shu, please be quiet. This is a wild pigeon that my grandmother just picked up in the forest behind me. It's still just dead. My grandmother asked my mother to cook it and eat it. When your grandmother finishes eating, I'll see if we can add a few more pieces and share them with you. Xiao Cheng's eyes lit up and he asked in surprise, Mom, you're really talking. With such a big wild pigeon, Grandma can't finish it alone. There must be some leftovers. Zhou poured out the water from the wooden basin and replaced it with another one, preparing to open the pigeon's chamber and wash its internal organs. Yeah, don't speak up with your siblings later. Zhou whispered. Xiao Qing nodded heavily, covering his mouth to suppress the noise. They had meat to eat at noon, 
which was still delicious pigeon meat, but he had never eaten wild pigeon meat before. He didn't know what the taste was, so he couldn't wait to prepare firewood for a hot pot. In the thatched hut, a few children gathered around a pot and stared eagerly at the pigeon meat boiling in it, with only half of the pot left from a large pot of water. End of this chapter Chapter 5, Eating Meat for the First Time You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5, Eating Meat for the First Time Chaoyu is a sister. In law, with a few nieces staring at the meat in the pot changing color little by little. The fragrance seeped into her nose through the light smoke. The children had just finished the batter a while ago, and now their stomachs were growling with hunger. Their little tongues were licking outside, and the smallest flower had already drooled. Zhou took his mother's chopsticks and pricked the meat in the pot, making holes one by one. Hmm, the meat is rotten. Xiao Cheng went to ask his grandmother to get up and eat the meat. Xiao Cheng looked at the pigeon meat in the pot, unable to move his eyes or feet, as if it had stuck to the pot. However, he still listened to his mother's words and reluctantly called his grandmother to eat the delicious meat. The smell of the meat made him unable to bear it, and his grandmother couldn't finish it alone. Xiao Qing heard her grandson Xiao Qing asking her to eat meat, sat up, and Qin Shi was still fanning her on the side. There was not even a small table for her to eat at home. Every time Zhou Shi brought her food, it was delivered to her hand. If she was scalded, the original owner would pick up the stick at hand and beat it down. If it cooled down, he would let her redo it. The original owner is really a ruthless owner. In addition to her own bowl, there are also five bowls at home. The ten of them only rely on five bowls to eat, and the children eat them before the adults eat them. In the end, the adults basically eat boiling water. There is a small stone slab next to her rattan frame bed, which is used to put dishes for her. After she finishes her meal, she puts it there, and Zhou or Qin take it away for washing. The original owner didn't like the people of the old Xiao family to be next to her, so when the eldest daughter dot in dot la Zhou didn't want to squeeze into the inside room, she wanted to sleep next to her. However, she disliked the people of the old Xiao family and disregarded worldly gossip, allowing the eldest daughter dot in dot la, second daughter dot in dot la, and second son to squeeze into the same room. As long as she felt comfortable, the original owner could really do anything. Xiao Qing curled up a bitter smile at the corner of his mouth. Such a wicked original owner, who deserves to live. Just as she was thinking about it, Zhou brought a bowl full of meat and knelt down to bring it to her. Mother, you eat meat. Zhou knelt down and gave the bowl to Xiao Qing's hand. Xiao Qing felt uneasy when he saw her kneeling. The original owner saw them kneeling, could they eat more bowls of rice, or how much taller they were. How much hatred is there, how much hatred can one do such a thing to these people? She took the bowl and said, Xiao Qingyang, get up. Zhou stood up carefully and retreated to the side. Perhaps she was obstructing her mother's eyes. Once, when she was delivering food to her mother, she knelt in an awkward position and almost scalded her hand. Angry, her mother scolded her and slapped her twice. Feeling that she was obstructing her eyes, she asked her to get up and go to the side. Xiao Qing was carrying a bowl full of meat. The pigeon was really fat, and Zhou couldn't bear to scrape off the butter in the soup. The oil floated a layer in the bowl, and when she was full, she wasted it. Moreover, this pigeon had already earned it for them. She saw several children at the door scratching the frame of the thatched cottage, greedily staring at her bowl, and her youngest granddaughter's flower smashing her mouth, swallowing saliva several times. She turned her head to look at Qin Shi, who had been fanning her all the time, and said, Yuan Yuan Yang, stop fanning. I'm not hot, go to the grass hut and get three bowls. Qin nodded and stopped the fan to go to the thatched hut to get a bowl. After taking three bowls, Xiao Qin took them over and used chopsticks to divide the meat into three bowls as evenly as possible. Then, Zhou took them to the five children and daughter Xiao Yu at the door. Zhou shook the bowl in her hand and felt uneasy. What's wrong with this mother? 
The vegetables are mixed up and given to the children to eat, and the meat is also given to them. Didn't the mother set her goal of making money on a few children? Mother herself didn't eat anything. Mom, they just had lunch and are not hungry. You should eat so much meat. This is cooked for you. Zhou said. Xiao Qin tried to maintain a proper tone and didn't allow her to ask any more questions. Just listen to me, Xiao Cheng Niang, go and give it to the children. After dividing, she turned to look at Qin again and said, Yuan Yuan Niang, is there any meat in the pot? Qin didn't know what she meant by asking this question, so she nodded and said, yes. Yes. Xiao Qin handed her her empty bowl and said, go and serve a bowl. Remember to leave one bowl for Er Jing in the pot. Qin took the bowl with a complicated expression on her face and looked at Zhou. The two of them listened to their mother's words without understanding. When Qin brought another bowl of meat, Xiao Qin glanced at it. Although it wasn't as much as the bowl just now, he could still chew out the meat. She looked at Zhou and Qin and said, This bowl of you two, go out together and eat all these bowls of meat. Zhou's trembling hand looked at his mother, whose attitude had suddenly changed. She couldn't help but ask, Mother. This. Xiao Qin smiled, but because her face was full of flesh and her eyes were squeezed together, the result was that she didn't smile at all. Fortunately, her attitude was not as firm as before. She said calmly, eat quickly. When Er Jing comes back and finishes eating the meat, the three of you come into the room. I have something to say to you. Zhou and Qin responded, with their two daughters-in-law, five grandchildren, and one daughter anxiously carrying bowls into the yard. Xiao Qin looked at his grandchildren, daughters, and daughter dot in dot law, all with their thin backbones protruding, especially Zhou and Xiao Cheng, who were too thin. Zhou still had old wounds on his body, and when the strong wind blew, he disappeared. These children need to be taken good care of. She saw the children carrying four bowls of pigeon meat to the yard to eat, and finally smiled with peace of mind at the corner of her mouth. She lay back on the vine and chewed on the remaining piece of meat in her bowl. She wanted to rest quickly. There were still many things to do in the afternoon and tomorrow, waiting for her to walk a few more steps and exchange more food in the system. The children in the yard were devouring the meat like wolves. They hadn't seen it for years and didn't finish chewing it. They quickly took a bite, but they shared a bowl with each other and didn't compete. You and I won't cry or feel aggrieved because there was less meat in that piece, or because someone ate an extra piece. They worked hard to nibble on the delicious pigeon meat. Zhou looked at their eating habits and reminded them with a smile, be careful of small bones that might get stuck, especially water mandarin and flower seeds. Slow down. A few children stuffed their mouths full of meat, hesitated to speak, and nodded in response. Xiao Gu Xiao Yunua was eating without arguing with the garden. She let her eat the ones with more meat, and silently nibbled on the ones with bones. They squatted on the ground eating, and no one had time to talk. As he was enjoying his meal, a voice came from the thatched cottage. Remember to drink the soup in the pot too. A few children and two adults heard this sound and immediately stopped nervously, looking at each other, afraid that grandma would take the meat back. Qin quickly swallowed the meat in her mouth and replied, Okay, mom. Mom, do you want soup? I'll serve you a bowl first. Xiao Qin closed her eyes and rested, No need, I'm not very hungry. You guys should drink. The people in the yard breathed a big sigh of relief after listening, lowered their heads, and tried to reduce their voices as much as possible. The wolf swallowed it and started eating again. At this moment, Xiao Yijing returned happily with baskets of wild vegetables on his back. He was bare-armed and barefoot, and saw his family squatting on the ground, bowing their heads and not speaking. Curiously, he walked over and saw them eating something with bowls, smelling good and savoring meat. What are you all eating? His honest voice suddenly exclaimed. End of this chapter. Chapter 6, Going to the County Town Tomorrow
You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 6 Going to the county town tomorrow a few children in Zhou Qin were startled and looked up at Xiao Yijing. The group of people squatting together made a shush gesture towards him. Xiao Yijing smiled, his focus not on their food and gestures, but on the wild vegetables he picked, which could be showcased in front of his family. This is their daily meal, and everyone in the family is stuttering today. He put down the wild vegetables in the basket and showed them, look, how many wild vegetables I picked at noon. These are enough for our family to eat for a day. Chin smiled as she looked at the bitter taste of Gynostema pentaphyllum and seven seven sprouts, Yuan Yuan and Shui Yuan also smiled, and the others followed suit. Xiao Yujing was puzzled by their laughter and looked at his daughter dot in dot law curiously, asking, what's going on today? Isn't mom at home? Why are you so happy? Qin did not respond to him, but got up and went to the grass hut to serve him meat, while the others continued to eat the remaining bit of meat in the bowl. Xiao Yujing saw that no one was paying attention to him, picking up the food from his bowl. He crouched behind his son Xiao Yang, watching the food he had brought into his mouth and the oil on the corner of his mouth. He picked up Xiao Yang with one hand and put away his smile, asking, Tell Dad, what are you eating? Why does it look like meat? Oh, it's really meat. Tell me quickly, where does this meat come from? Xiao Yang was lifted by Xiao Yijing and turned around, puffing his cheeks and chewing on the meat. He hugged the small bowl in his arms and muttered, Dad, Mom has served you meat. You will have something to eat later. Don't try to snatch it from me. Zhou saw Xiao Yang protecting the meat in the bowl and smiled, saying to Xiao Yijing, Uncle, please put down Yang Zi and let him eat. I'll tell you. At this moment, Qin Sheng brought over the meat and handed it to Xiao Yijing. He then took the message and said, It's my mother. Then the two of them explained how their mother found a pigeon in the forest and asked them to cook the pigeon and explain it to Er Jing before and after. The more Xiao Yijing listened, the more he felt that something was wrong with his mother. Why is this different from usual? Mom's not quite right. Shouldn't she be eating dead pigeons on her own? If she doesn't eat them all day and gives them to us, is there something wrong with her? Why did she suddenly treat us well? Xiao Yijing said, glancing at the meat in Qin's bowl. He hasn't seen the fishy smell of meat for years, and now half of the bowl of meat is in front of him. He has been hungry for another day, and he can't bear the smell of the aroma. Since his mother left it for him, he didn't want to take a piece of bone and meat and take a bite. After taking this bite, he didn't know where the next bite would be. He could take one bite at a time. Qin handed the bowl to him and said, after finishing it later, my mother said we should go inside and say she has something to say to us. Xiao Yijing was afraid of this stepmother from the bottom of his heart. She was not sharp or harsh, she was malicious and bad. If he didn't listen to her, the whole family would suffer. Okay. I'll finish this bit of meat in a few bites, soon. Xiao Yijing said. A fat pigeon, after being eaten in a predatory manner by a few people, only has a few bone racks left. Xiao Cheng and Xiao Yang were reluctant to throw it away. After cleaning the bones, they held on to a bone rack and put them together to see if they could still recreate the appearance of a pigeon. The other children ate so well that they gathered around to piece together pigeon bones. Inside, Xiao Yijing walked into the thatched cottage with his wife and sister. In. Law. The three of them saw Xiao Qing lying down, and Xiao Yijing walked over and shouted, Mother. Xiao Qing heard the sound and opened her eyes. She rolled over and saw three people standing at the door blocking the light. She rubbed her eyes and pointed to the straw next to the vine rack. Let's all sit down first. He said as he sat up from the vine stand. Xiao Yijing and his wife sat a few steps away from Xiao Qing, while Zhou sat next to Qing. None of the three dared to approach Xiao Qing for fear of her getting angry, so they slapped her. Seeing the distance between the three of them and her, Xiao Qing chuckled inwardly. The bad and evil of the original owner had already been engraved in their bones. 
If they wanted to change their views, they had to change it overnight. She didn't care about these things, and her voice was also loud. Sitting so far to speak, they could also hear her. Did Er Jing come back to eat meat? Xiao Qing asked. Xiao Yujing's face was straight, without a trace of a smile. He wouldn't be bought by a pigeon. If his mother gave them food, there must be something very difficult waiting for him. Hmm, Xian Yang cares, the second emperor has eaten well. Xiao Qing sat up straight, ignoring the fear, nervousness, and precautions of the three of them. She moved her seat and made the rattan stand ring again. I called you here to explain to you that you should go to the county early. Second, please don't go to the mountains to look for wild vegetables tomorrow morning. Come with me to the county. As soon as the three of them heard this, they looked at their mother in unison. They didn't know what she was doing in the county town again. Last time she went to the county town, she still gave her younger brother and sister away as servants. What are you doing with him this time? Xiao Er asked alertly, Mom, will you take me to the county alone? Xiao Qin couldn't see the concern and vigilance in his eyes, so he almost asked her, Mom, are you going to send that grandson and granddaughter to a wealthy family again? She has been involved in the workplace for many years, and if that's not evident, she's just fooling around. Take you and your sister. In law, there's nothing at home. I'm too fat, I'm afraid I won't be able to carry anything. She said calmly, I still have some money left by your father on me. Our family is short of anything, so we can buy as much as we can. Tomorrow, you can go to the county with me to buy some food for our home. And on this day, it's autumn, and it's getting cold at night. You and a few children are still naked, and it's so ugly to walk out. Xiao Qing thought more and more. She didn't have enough money with her. Their family was short of food and drink, clothing and housing. They were short of everything, so they were not short of words. She needed to think about how to make their family eat and dress better, so they could even see people when they went out. After Xiao Qing finished speaking, the room was quiet for a moment. The three of them only felt that they had misheard, or perhaps their mother bit her tongue and didn't speak clearly. She wanted to use the dowry money left by her father to buy them food and clothing. In the past two years, my family has been eating wild vegetables, drinking raw water, with my back facing the scorching sun and my face facing dry soil. I have been starving and panicking day and night, and my family has been eating seven or seven sprouts and gynostemma pentaphyllum to make ends meet. My mother doesn't say she will give them the money, but as long as she doesn't find a way to make money from them, they are already reciting Buddhism to make ends meet. After Xiao Qin finished speaking, the three of them were startled for a while and did not come to their senses. Zhou is honest and a sincere person. She doesn't ask questions in a roundabout manner, and everything she says is reflected on her face. Her surprised expression has already revealed what she wants to say. Mom, why are you suddenly different? I think. I think. Xiao Qing saw Zhou's hesitation and hesitation. She usually works the most, is the most diligent, but her mouth is the dumbest, and she is also a straightforward person. She asks whatever she wants, which is different from Qin's. Qin has more eyes than her, but she can't escape the original owner's beating. Such an honest person should not be continued to be bullied. Xiao Qing had an ordinary attitude and asked for her unanswered words, do you think my attitude towards you is different from before? Zhou nodded timidly, then immediately lowered her head, waiting for Xiao Qing to scold her for being stupid, scolding her for wasting her mouth, and asking for anything she scolded, waiting for the vine to hit her. End of this chapter Chapter 7, Entering the County Town You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7, Entering the County Town But the fact is, Xiao Qin not only did not hit the Zhou family, but also sat closer to the few people in a friendly posture. Xiao Yujing and Qin Shi remained silent, waiting for their mother to speak. It was obvious that her mother was now two people from before. Xiao Qin let out a long sigh, asking them to come was to dispel their suspicion. She wanted to talk to them with a smile, 
but she thought her chubby head and big face would look ugly when she smiled, so he spoke as calmly as possible. A few days ago, I came down from the mountain and fainted in the village. My mother went to the Yenwang temple in a coma and saw your father and mother suffering underground. So the long-tongued ghost below took me to see how the wrongdoers below were punished. The ground was so scary, it was really hell. There were little ghosts whipping people with thorns, there was an indestructible fire burning their bodies, and they made people boil oil pots. Sigh, my soul was scared. Looking back on how I had done so many bad things to you before, I will definitely go underground in the future. Being punished, one's life is alive, and one must not do evil. There will really be retribution when one comes down to the bottom. People are alive, and we should not only live for ourselves, but also redeem ourselves for the evil we have done. Therefore, this awakening has led me to lie here thinking for a day and a night, and it has also made me realize that although I am not your biological mother or mother. In law, I have finally entered the door of the old Xiao family. Regardless of whether the future is good or bad, let's cross it together. If there is an opportunity to bring Xiao Hong and Xiao Fang back from a wealthy family, and if our family can reunite, it will be considered my sin to redeem. Although these words were fabricated, Xiao Qing's expression was sincere when he said them, as if he was really scared. His voice was slightly hoarse, and it looked like it was real. The change explained by this reason may be acceptable to them, after all, they have their own father and mother. Upon hearing this, Zhou's heart softened and she whispered, Mother, don't be afraid of suffering below. We will plead for your mercy. We can understand what you did before. When you're not as old as us, you become a grandmother and a mother. In law. You have grievances and hatred in your heart, and when you want to please your father, you may be talked about casually. When your father passes away, you may be criticized for being cruel to your husband. In fact, you feel bitter in your heart, but you never say it. It's really bitter that you can't express it. Xiao Qing looked at Zhou Shi with a smile on his lips. Otherwise, this honest person has a strong sense of empathy. He has been beaten all over his body every day and is still trying to defend his original owner. Why did his heart soften? Qin hesitated and said, Mother, what sister dot in dot law said is that the past is over. Let's live a good life in the future. If we can redeem our third and fourth sons, our family can be reunited. Xiao Qin saw his two daughters-in-law speaking up, but even though Er Jing remained silent, he still had some doubts and confusion on his face. It was not urgent, as the days ahead grew, and he naturally knew the truth. You all think of it with me now. All right, since you understand, I don't have much to say. Let's eat some wild vegetables tonight. Tomorrow morning, Xiao Cheng's mother and Yuan Yuan's father will come with me to the county. Yuan Yuan's mother is at home, watching over a few children. Zhou's response was delayed and she became nervous. She didn't know why her mother asked her to go, but she couldn't ignore her mother's words. Xiao Yijing readily agreed, as long as he didn't bring his child or younger sister, he could bring anyone. After the agreement was made, Xiao Qing rested in the room in the afternoon. With such a chubby body, if she exercises too much at once, it may hurt her legs and feet. She needs to gradually increase her exercise volume. She takes a break, gets up, and walks for a while, repeatedly, but it's not tiring. Looking at the lush mountains in the distance, she wanted to wait until the day after tomorrow to go to the mountains and see what could be eaten. Even if she couldn't find anything to eat, she could walk from home to the mountains and exchange a lot of food in the system mall. Just now they were eating meat outside. When she lay on the vine and opened the small supermarket system mall, she saw that there was rice, flour, oil, and various coarse grains inside, and the required steps were not many. The steps taken in the afternoon plus the steps to the county town tomorrow should be able to exchange for a lot of food. In the afternoon, Xiao Qing dug out the money bag that the original owner had hidden from the ground. She weighed it in her hand and calculated according to the current silver coins of the Duching dynasty, 
one or two silver coins were equivalent to ten silver coins, and one silver coin was equivalent to one hundred one. She had three or four tails of silver in her hand, and with her symbol of identity, the money bag was bulging. Now that there has been a severe drought for several years, the amount of grain in the land is decreasing, and the price of grain in the county is also increasing. Nowadays, one kilogram of grain costs five or six one, and white noodles and rice are even more expensive. Money may not necessarily buy them, not to mention buying pots, pots, bowls and chopsticks, bedding, and fabrics. It is unknown whether one can buy a few kilograms of grain, but it is unlikely that these few tails of silver will last for a few days. There is a shortage of things in the family, and houses and thatched cottages need to be built Xiao Qing's brain hurts, how could he be so poor? In the evening, Zhou cooked the pigeon soup that she hadn't finished at noon, washed the wild vegetables and put them in the pot. She opened a pot and gave Xiao Qingxing a big bowl, but Xiao Qing didn't eat it. She poured the thick soup back into the pot, took a few sips of soup, and then went to the village and the foot of the mountain for a walk. The next day, before it was even dark, Xiao Qin couldn't lie down. The rattan bed was too far apart, and she didn't know how many marks were left on her back. If she hadn't been tired and panicked, she would have slept with her eyes open that night. She stumbled out of bed and walked out. In the distance, a glow appeared on the dark sky, and it was almost dawn. Upon hearing the commotion, Xiao Yijing and Zhou also got up, washed their faces, carried bamboo baskets on their backs, and prepared to follow Xiao Qing to the county. Xiao Qing doesn't carry anything. Just walking is already enough for her. If she carries any bamboo baskets, she may not be able to walk to the county. The three of them didn't eat anything. Xiao Qing washed his face, rinsed his mouth, and then left with the two of them. The original owner loved coming to the county the most because every time she came, there were wealthy relatives and delicious food waiting for her. Xiao Yumin had two younger sisters married in the county town, and one younger brother had opened a liquor shop in the county town in his early years. Later, the liquor sold well, so he opened a restaurant in the county town, which is still a well-known restaurant. When Xiao Yumin died, the three siblings and their families came to Yaoshan village to pay their respects. At that time, the original owner only found out that they had such wealthy relatives and were from the county. They also knew that the three of them had great abilities, so they were able to flatter and please them in front of them. Every time they came to the county, they had to go to Xiao Yuliang's restaurant to get married and stutter, or else they would stay at the two sisters' house for two days. Xiao Xiangmin is a person who despises poverty and strives for wealth. Whenever he sees his former owner calling his brother in the restaurant, he annoys her and asks the waiter to send her away quickly, claiming that he doesn't know her. Even when Xiao Yijing asked him for help in rescuing his siblings, Xiao Yuliang just smiled and said that their family had nothing to do with them, so he asked Xiao Yijing to leave. After Xiao Yumin's death, several families had no further contact, and after several years of severe drought, they went to borrow money and food, but were all driven out by the three families. Along the way, Xiao Yijing and Zhou were worried that their mother would lose face at Xiao's restaurant again. In previous years, when she went to the county, her mother would go to the restaurant, and everyone would say it was her uncle. End of this chapter Chapter 8, Jinxiu Cloth Shop You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8, Jinxiu Cloth Shop Xiao Yijing knew that his mother understood but pretended to be confused. He didn't know why their family was going through such a miserable life. When his father went to the border to serve as a soldier, he sent the military pay he received every year to support his family. Later, due to his father's desertion, his uncle and aunt, in order to protect the land near the river, said they would first allocate the land to them, fearing that the land would be taken away by the government. It would be difficult to argue with the government. The family decided to allocate it to his uncle and two aunts first, and wait for the wind to come back. But with this one stroke, the land will never come back. Xiao Yijing and Zhou Shi went to ask for it a few times, but were beaten up by their uncle and aunt, 
saying that returning the land to them is also a waste. It's better to give it to our own family than to leave it to an outsider. If it weren't for their land being taken away, the old Xiao family wouldn't have fallen into this land. If they had nothing to eat or drink now, they would have gone to the county magistrate to judge. The uncle held a black and white land deed and said that they had voluntarily signed it with the inscription of Chiao Yijing. How could Chiao Yijing and Zhou know what was written in black and white? They believed everything that uncle and little auntie said in the beginning. They thought they were unlucky. The two of them whispered and discussed that if their mother went to the tavern to find her uncle, they would turn around and leave. If they didn't embarrass themselves with her, they wouldn't have such an uncle either. However, today my mother is really good at saving money. Every time she comes to the county, they always ride on the donkey cart of the old horse family in the village, and each person wants two one. Today, my mother doesn't ride anything and takes the two of them to the county. Although it took over an hour to walk and stop on the road to reach the county, saving six one, we could buy over a pound of millet, which would be enough for their family to eat for a few days. At the market in the county town, families from poor villages tighten their belts, but here it is bustling and unlike them, buying and selling various snacks. The bartender in front of the tavern and inn is dressed in clean linen clothes, like Chiao Yijing, with bare arms and carrying pants. The county is almost deserted. Xiao Qing smelled the fragrance coming from the stall. Although her legs and feet were weak and she could not breathe, she still walked step by step to find the fragrance. When she reached a beautiful cloth shop, she decided to stop. When she saw the delicious mantu not far away, she could not move any more. She called out to Chiao Yijing and Zhou Shi, took them to the dark alley, took out a money bag from her pocket, and handed one or two silver coins to the two of them. Listen up, you two. Give this five silver coins to Xiao Qingyang. You will go buy some pots, bowls, ladles, and bowls, five pounds of rice and noodles each later. If there is still some left, go beat some lard and buy some candles. If there is no left, let's just give it to Yijing. You can buy a few tables and chairs, as well as a large wooden basin, and see how many bed frames you can buy with the remaining money. If it gets cold, those children will freeze and break if they sleep in the straw again. Air Jing's money is not enough. I'll give you two more coins of silver, and you'll just spend it. Xiao Yijing took the money and looked at the white silver and copper coins in his hand. Although the silver was small like fava beans, it was heavy. He had never seen so much money from childhood to adulthood. Listening to his mother asking him to use this money to buy beds for the children and even to ask his sister in law to buy food, his mother was really different. In an instant, the years of hard treatment and grievances seemed to come to an end, and my eyes suddenly became moist. Mom, you. Xiao Yijing's heart warmed. Mom didn't lie, she was really changing. Nowadays, if you can't eat or wear at home, you can easily build a board to solve the problem of the bed. With so much money to buy a bed frame, your body only has so much money. After spending it, it's better to save on buying food instead of buying a bed. Mother, the bed matter can be pushed back a bit. If we can't eat or wear at home, let's stick to our family's food and clothing for now. Xiao Yijing thought to give the money back to his mother. Xiao Qinglin gave him a cold glance and his tone became stern. Look at how Yang Zi and Yuan 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 have been bitten by insects. Their bodies are all rotten and sore. You, as a father, don't worry at all. If you don't buy, bring the money over and I'll go buy it. Xiao Yijing raised his eyebrows. It wasn't thanks to your mother that our family had become like this. He couldn't even borrow a saw in the village, and his mother would argue with anyone she caught. There were not many people in the village who looked up to their family and didn't even bother to borrow anything. Why do we make a bed? This money cannot go to my mother's hands, there is no return. Mom, I'll go buy it, I'll buy it. Xiao Yijing was so scared that he turned around holding the money and was about to leave. Zhou listened obediently, tightly gripping the silver in her hand. 
If her mother was willing to buy more for the family, she would definitely buy it well. If she could save, she would try to buy more and add more household chores to the family. After the two were sent away by Xiao Qing, she turned into the depths of the alley alone and looked around without anyone. She called out to the system mall Xiao Chao. She needs to check how many steps she has taken from yesterday to today, and see how many food items can be exchanged in the mall. After the step count result was displayed, it didn't disappoint Xiao Qing. From yesterday afternoon's efforts and walking more than 10 miles down, with over 20,000 steps, Xiao Qing saw the results of the war and was delighted that he could exchange it for a lot of food. She quickly entered the system and replaced the items she had planned to exchange. In addition to lacking food and drink, Yaoshan County also lacks clothing. Her two little radish heads are already in autumn, and she is still naked. The little girl's clothing is also exposed everywhere, after all, it is an ancient time when men and women were on guard. How can a girl wear clothes that are exposed everywhere? How many girls walked over to the county town with their faces covered? Of course, she couldn't change clothes directly. The fabrics and clothes in ancient and modern times were different, and it would definitely raise suspicion when taken out. Therefore, she chose to rest next to the Jinshio cloth shop and wait for the grain to be exchanged. She remembered that the Zhou and Qin families would make clothes, and giving them cloth would take them less than two days to make several bodies. Xiao Qin quickly chose a bag of 25 pounds of white flour and a bag of 25 pounds of white rice, which only took more than 4,000 steps together. She also changed her self-defense knife, which required 1,000 steps. After all, she was such a fat person, carrying such good food to change cloth. In this era of worrying about food and drink, it was too I dot catching. After she placed the order, two bags of burlap grain suddenly appeared on the ground, making her smile. She picked up the rice noodles and took a few steps, but her legs were trembling. She had to drag two bags of rice noodles on the ground. Fortunately, she was right next to the cloth shop, otherwise she wouldn't have died if it dragged so heavily. When he arrived at the entrance of the cloth shop, Xiao Qing put down the rice noodles, entered the shop, and called out the cabinet inside. Jinxiu Silk and Satin Shop is an ordinary cloth shop in Yaoshan County. The shopkeeper here is the shopkeeper, whose surname is Li, and they do affordable business. The fabric cannot be said to be the best, but the clothes made of it here are durable and the quality of the fabric is wear dot resistant, which is deeply loved by the people in their countryside. Li, the shopkeeper, was called out by Xiao Qing. When he saw two bags of rice and noodles placed at his doorstep, he immediately waved his hand and said, Alas, our family doesn't accept rice and noodles, and we don't lack food. We only accept silver and copper coins for selling cloth. You can carry it to the grain shop in front to exchange for silver before buying cloth. End of this chapter Chapter 9, Changing Cloth You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9, Changing Cloth Xiao Qingxin thought that the rice and noodles she exchanged in the mall were exquisite, not comparable to the ancient coarse grains and millet. The taste was naturally delicious. She dressed like this and sent such good rice and noodles to the grain shop, which may have caused any thoughts from the grain shop owner. Moreover, she couldn't bear it anymore. When her fat and flesh were reduced and she had the strength, she would go to the front grain shop to exchange money. Lee shopkeeper, Lee shopkeeper, don't leave. Look at my fat, I've been carrying it from the countryside to the county for more than ten miles, and I can't walk anymore. Look at these two buckets of fine flour, they're not just ordinary wheat ground. Take a look, take a look before leaving. Xiao Qing pulled Li shopkeeper to the side of the noodles. She smiled and bent down to open the bag, pinching a pinch of flour from inside, and then handed it to shopkeeper Li. Look, you touch this flour. Most of the flour in ancient times was ground with a stone mill, and it was difficult to achieve modern refinement. The flour was white, tender, and without bran. It was already a loss for Xiao Qing to exchange such good flour with him for cloth. 
If she didn't know the goods, she could only recognize the plants and find a grain shop. Manager Lee rubbed the flower in his hand, smooth and delicate. His eyes lit up and his eyebrows furrowed. How could there be such flower in the world? He looked at the woman in front of him in surprise, but his eyes unconsciously turned to the bag of rice and said, This flower is good flour, and what about the rice? Xiao Qing smiled and pulled open the rice bag again, grabbing a handful of rice and handing it to the shopkeeper Li, Look at this rice, each one is full and ready to eat, white and shiny. Where can I find such good rice on the shopkeeper's cabinet? Li, the shopkeeper, looked at the rice noodles with a furrowed brow. Seeing that the woman's attire didn't look like someone who could grow such rice, let alone the severe drought, where rice is stored, he asked anxiously, Sister, can you honestly tell me where you stole this rice noodles from? Listening to his suspicion, Xiao Qing not only became angry, but also understood that if she dressed like this, it would be good for her to have a stuttering at home, and she could also have such good rice and noodles. It was either stolen or deceived. She squinted her eyes and smiled calmly, saying, What did Manager Li say? As farmers, we should have done some sneaky things. If you don't want to change, I won't disturb you. There are several cloth and grain shops ahead. I'll go exchange some money, which will definitely be more expensive than changing your cloth. But I suspect our character is uncomfortable. If we grind out such rice noodles again in the future, I won't dare to exchange them with you. Today, I'm tired and can't move on my back. Seeing that you like a few fabrics from your house, I feel itchy and want to exchange them with you. I changed it. If you doubt it and don't want to change, I'll just carry it to another house when I'm tired. After speaking, she didn't wait for Manager Lee to carry the rice noodles to the cloth shop in front of her. Alas, she will have to carry these two bags of heavy objects and go far away to exchange them. Manager Lee is not angry or angry when he sees the chubby woman, her words are both pleasant and fair, unlike those who steal. Moreover, in recent years of severe drought, who has such food and doesn't hide it? I had no choice but to exchange the cloth. He smiled thoughtfully and said, Sigh, little girl, don't leave. I didn't say no, even if you stole this rice and noodles, it doesn't matter to me. When I open the door to do business, I naturally won't let go of good things. Although the rice and noodles in your hand may not be the best, they are not wrong in Yaoshan County. I can consider accepting them, but the price can only be cheaper than the ones in the grain shop. I can't give you the same price. If you think it's okay, you can go to my store to pick fabric. Xiao Qing saw that he wanted to lower the price. She didn't have much rice and noodles on her back, and even if she arrived at the grain shop, they wouldn't give her a good price. They would also send someone to follow her to investigate her background and see why she could have such good rice and noodles. Although the shopkeeper of the cloth shop is pressuring him on the price, there is always a source for this rice noodles. There will be no inquiries like a grain shop about the source of her rice noodles, like investigating household registration, and the follow dot up will be endless. She smiled and said, Manager Lee, tell me, how much do you give me for two buckets of rice and two buckets of noodles? If I think it's suitable, I'll exchange my rice and noodles with your family in the future. Manager Lee felt his beard on both sides and estimated the market price, thinking that he could not give too much or too little. After calculating for a while, he smiled and said, Little girl, do you think this is suitable? The white flour is expensive, and the good flour in the grain shop is 200 won per dough. Although our flour is good, the quantity is too small. I will give you 151, and the rice is cheaper in the market. The good rice is 81 per dough, and your rice is 71 per dough. What do you think? If there are still such good rice and noodles in the future, please send them to me, and we will raise the price in the future. Xiao Qin felt the sincerity of Manager Li, and he was right. The market price was around this price. In this drought year, rice, flour, and oil are expensive, and the rice and flour have doubled in length. 
The villagers can eat miscellaneous grains, coarse grains, peas and bean noodles, which is already good. It is common for most households to eat bran and vegetables, not to mention fine flour and white rice. Few people in Yaoshan village have seen it. The price offered by manager Li was also reasonable, but Xiao Qing still didn't rush to agree. After thinking about it for a while, he deliberately glanced at his store and smiled, saying, that's right. Although the price you gave me is not good, that's all I have. If I screen out the rice and noodles in the future, Manager Li will raise the price for me. Manager Li smiled and made a gesture of invitation, then, little girl, go in and take a look. Which cloths are suitable, and you can pull them away. Xiao Qing carried the rice noodles on his back and delivered them to the store. He then patted the flour on his body and found a piece of indigo blue linen cloth, two pieces of ancient bronze linen cloth, as well as some shoe uppers and sols. They were handed over to manager Li to calculate how much it cost. The shopkeeper Li saw her carrying several batches of cloth to the counter, and he felt relieved. He thought she was interested in good fabrics, and he didn't need to measure them with a ruler to know how many feet there were here. One piece of fine linen cloth is often bought by the villagers in the county. Although it doesn't earn much money, the value lies in the quantity. Coincidentally, there has been a severe drought in the past two years, and the sales of hemp cloth have been low. It would be a good thing if this girl could help him eliminate some inventory. Sister, you have a keen eye when choosing these fabrics. This fine linen cloth is 201, and those two coarse linen cloth are also 201. You can't take the sole and upper of these shoes. This sole alone is 101, and it's not a big deal to give you a few one for the upper. For dough of rice noodles are 401, and if you remove 401 from the fine linen cloth and linen cloth, you can buy cloth for the cheaper soles. Why don't you take a few pairs of uppers with you today? Manager Li pressed down the soles of the shoes and didn't sell them. Xiao Qing smiled and knew that the soles were expensive. She didn't buy those cloth shoes because even if she had four more buckets of rice noodles, she couldn't buy a pair of embroidered cloth shoes. She thought the soles would be lower, probably even more expensive than fine linen. Okay, okay, I'll go grind some fine noodles and white rice another day. I'll bring them here and exchange them with you. Manager Li will give me a cheaper price then. Xiao Qin said with a smile. As soon as Manager Li heard that she still had rice noodles, he felt happy and said, Okay, little girl, you can take as much from me as you have in the future. End of this chapter Chapter 10, Returning from the County You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10, Returning from the County Xiao Qing held a few cloths and asked Shopkeeper Li for a needle and thread. Thinking about something else, he asked, Shopkeeper Li, you are familiar with the county. Do you know whose donkey cart and ox cart run to Yaoshan village? Look at me holding so many, it would be better to hire a cart. Manager Li was polite and showed her a way to hire a donkey cart. Xiao Yujing and Zhou bought many household items and arrived at the entrance of the alley when they were about to leave. They saw that Xiao Qing had been waiting here for a long time. The two of them didn't walk up to their mother's side soon, and when they saw that she had hired a donkey cart, no one blamed her for spending money. They only had six hands. How could they carry back so many things without a donkey cart? However, when Xiao Yujing put down the table and stool and saw what was on the donkey cart, he was immediately taken aback and said, Mom, where does this rice, flour, and oil come from? And these cloths, and such a big piece of pork. Mom, are these all things you just bought? How much silver should I spend? Have you used up all the personal money in my mother's pocket? Xiao Qing naturally had a calculation in her heart. There were over 20,000 steps in the Xiao Chao system mall, and after removing and replacing four dough of rice noodles, there were still over 16,000 steps left. She decided to replace three dough of rice and three dough of noodles, using over 6,000 steps, and then a piece of front leg meat. She chose the killed one, which was valuable. She said it was black pork from somewhere, 
used over 6,000 steps, and used another 2,000 steps to exchange for half a can of lard. Lard was not easy to buy, so it was expensive in the mall, she changed the salt for the last few steps, which was quite cheap. She changed two paper bags and only took 500 steps. The steps in the mall were almost exhausted, so she took out 15 won from her pocket to rent a donkey cart, and with those few pieces of cloth, she got this half cart. My mother's body and money are all here, enough for our family to eat for a few days. Xiao Qin helped him carry the iron tools he bought onto the donkey cart, turned back to look at Zhou, helped her take the big pot from her arms, and put it on the donkey cart. My mother hopes you can eat better and dress better. Maybe next year is a harvest year, and the weather will be favorable. Our future life will be easier. Since Xiao Qin confided in them yesterday, Zhou has trusted her mother in her heart. She believes everything her mother says. With so much flesh, thinking about how happy Xiao Cheng is to see it makes her happy. Zhou held a few one in her hand, worried that her mother would scold her for spending money and not even buying lard. She hesitated and handed the money to Xiao Qing, saying, Mom, I didn't buy lard. Xiao Qing saw her bowing her head, afraid that scolding her would be useless and would ruin her family. A few yards away from her, she walked over with a smile and pointed to the pots, bowls, rice, candles, and kitchen knife in the donkey cart. Why don't you let Irjing help you with all these things alone? Get on the donkey cart quickly. It's late to go back, and the children will have to drink cold water to keep them hungry at noon. Zhou let out a confused exclamation, only to see his mother's face when she was dragged onto the donkey cart. Surprisingly, there was no trace of anger on her face, and she didn't ask for a few won of money in her hand. Her eyes were warm, and her mother was really determined to live a good life with them. Their mother is really good. Xiao Yujing saw that his mother was not angry with his sister. In law, but instead let her get on the donkey cart, and his view of his mother was also changing. He voluntarily returned the remaining money to his mother and said, Mother, the table and chairs are expensive, so I didn't buy a few. Instead, I bought files, hammers, and saws. Let's go home and learn to make them myself, which is much cheaper than the ones sold in the county. Xiao Qing doesn't blame him either. The second Jinghui leads a life without him in the family these years. Their whole family has starved to death several times. She pushed away the hand he handed over and said, Mom, don't want it. You can keep it. When you have time, you can bring Xiaolan and the children to the county to buy some snacks to satisfy the children's cravings. Don't stare at their children's delicious mouths all day. Those that look like they have about a hundred won, not much, and some iron tools are very expensive, with only one hundred won left, indicating that Xiao Er has worn away a lot with them. Xiao Yujing's throat seemed to be stuck by something, choked up for a while, suppressed the tears in his eyes, and nodded, saying, Mom, thank you, I understand. Xiao Qing noticed that their emotions were not right in their eyes. She wouldn't advise those who were full of emotions, so she urged them, get on the donkey cart. This cart is precious, it costs fifteen won per trip. Today, our family will have to spend a lot of money on it. Xiao Yujing and Zhou Shi didn't speak, but listened to their mother's words and got on the donkey cart, rushing back home. At noon, riding a donkey cart is much faster than walking, and it takes less than half an hour to arrive. Xiao Qin was very tired from this trip. She got off the donkey cart and called for the children to help move things. She asked Er Jing and Zhou to watch the children and instructed Qin to cook meat. When stewing the meat, she poured in a few bowls of rice and cooked pork rice together for the children to eat. After saying that, she went to the house and lay down. She is so fat and has walked so much in the past two days. If she doesn't rest for a while, she will be dying. Qin responded, seeing a cart full of food and clothing, thinking to himself how much money should have been spent. But what does the mother do? She just listens, these are the mother's personal money. Xiao Qin lay down and rested until Qin Shi called for a meal before she woke up. 
The table and a few small stools bought by Irjing came in handy. In the center of the yard, on a square table, there were nine bowls of meat rice. The children of the courtyard and their sons and daughters-in-law were waiting for her to sit down first. She walked over and sat down first. She looked at the meatball in front of her, there was plenty of meat and rice, she was hungry, very hungry. She picked up chopsticks, picked up a bowl, and pointed to the chairs around the small table, saying, you all sit down. Such good white rice and meat rice, don't you just look hungry? Xiao Qing licked his mouth, swallowed saliva, and looked at Xiao Qing with bright eyes. He was pleasantly surprised and asked, Grandma, how many of us can sit and eat with you? Xiao Qing tilted his eyes at him and said, Of course you can. Let's all sit down and eat quickly. Why are you still standing there? There's plenty of rice and noodles, enough for you to eat. If it's not enough, Grandma will buy them for you. Xiao Cheng looked at Zhou again, who nodded and smiled, Don't look at me, listen to Grandma. Xiao Cheng let out a sigh and greeted Xiao Yuan Yuan and Xiao Yang. His sister Dot in Dot Law, Xiao Yu, sat down together and each person prepared a bowl to eat. A few children looked at the smooth black bowl, a bowl of thick and tender white rice, with large pieces of meat hidden inside the rice grains, and the insects in their stomachs were chirping in unison. Xiao Qing glanced at his grandmother and said, Grandma, did we eat? Xiao Qing smiled and urged, eat quickly. Xiao Qing raised his eyebrows towards Xiao Yang, and the two of them were ready to start. They quickly lowered their heads and scooped the rice into their mouths. A few children also followed their two brothers carrying bowls, picking up rice and delivering it to their mouths. The three adults saw that they had all eaten, and with the tacit consent of their mother, they each picked up their bowls and started eating. The sound of eating grilled rice and chewing meat in the yard made several children almost choke because they ate too fast. Fortunately, Qin prepared water in advance, which prevented the children from choking. Xiao Yuan Yuan took a bite of the meat and said with a smile, San Xing, let's talk about the delicious white noodles and buns next time. I'll beat him up. It's clearly the best steamed rice with pork. End of this chapter